Nation of Fit and Ten, welcome to day 11 of the challenge. And I'm going to get right into more of your feedback. So let's do that. Somebody wrote in, I won't read the question, but basically what can I do for knee health? What can I do to improve the strength of my knees? And without telling you what to do specifically, there is actually somebody I want you to check out. Look at, if you're on social media, look at knees over toes guy. Okay, that's, that's, that's his handle. Knees over toes guy or ATG. Look up ATG, the ATG guy. Uh, I think ATG stands for Ass to the Grass. Look at some of the stuff that he promotes and look at look at the results he has with clients. It's really quite uh, astronomical. He's really challenging some of the dogma that's been out there for years about what's good for knees and what isn't good for knees. And this is coming from a guy who, not me, the, the ATG guy, the knees over toes guy, who had, uh, they called him old man in high school, okay? And he actually rebuilt his knees and now you should see the stuff he can do with his knees. He's got a whole program out there. He's got a whole following. He's really uh, taken off over the last couple of years. So check out Knees Over Toes Guy on social media or look up ATG. Um, ATG, okay? I think that stands for Ask the Grass. Uh, I cannot remember his name. But check him out. He's got some. He's got some fascinating stuff. I will tell you just just give you a little bit of a of taste of what he'll recommend. One of the first things he recommends is to do reverse walking with resistance. So like pulling a sled and reverse walking, or walking on a treadmill backwards. Basically walking backwards um, with some level of of uh, resistance. All right. So uh, that's all I'm going to say on that. Here are three of seven reasons okay seven reasons why protein consumption is really really important number one and i'll go through the rest of these tomorrow number one building it is a building block for all tissues not all tissues for the majority of tissues in the body okay so basically everything protein is a building block for everything we're just made up of protein essentially with the exception of maybe body fat and maybe our nervous system Okay, or directly our nervous system. Well, more more specifically, I guess our brain. We are built built of uh, we are built of essentially protein. That's it, and water. Uh, at least, largely speaking, even bone is over fifty percent protein. And our tissues are constantly regenerating. So we need essential. We need excuse me. We need enough of the amino acids, including arguably more importantly, the essential amino acids, since we can't make those, we need these amino acids for our tissues, for keeping us healthy, all right? If you ever follow a low protein diet, or perhaps you had very, very low intake of essential amino acids, you might notice things like your hair falling out, or your, your nails becoming very brittle, or your recovery from any kind of trauma, like whether it's a cut or in the gym, your protein is just not there. And remember that this requires that, no, actually I'll come to that point in a second. Okay, I'll come, I'll come to that uh, in, uh, in another couple of points here. Protein has the, so the number two, protein has the highest thermic effect. Okay, it has the highest uh, digestion cost. It takes about 30% of the energy in protein to digest protein. So if you eat 100 calories of protein, about 30 calories are going towards digestion. And who doesn't want that, right? I mean, who doesn't want to basically eat calories and then not get, get at least part of those calories? Number three, it is necessary for muscle maintenance and recovery. So this is where I was going to go with point one. Recovery, again, not just, not just muscle, but any kind of trauma. We need that protein for proper recovery, for shortening the window of recovery. Okay. All right, I'll go through more reasons uh, to eat protein tomorrow. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, yeah, just quickly here. I talked about protein powder. Here are two things I want you to really pay attention to when you pick a protein powder. The amount of ingredients in the protein powder, we want very little, okay? Obviously, there's going to be a, probably at least a couple ingredients in there. Uh, if not, you know, probably five or six. Okay, try not to go with anything more than like eight or nine. 
Um, you know, there's obviously going to be some things in there, like perhaps some some sweetener and thickening agents, etc. So that's one thing. Number two, we want to look at the purity of the protein. How do we know what the purity is? Look at the serving size. What's the serving size on this one? 30 grams. That is the serving size. How much protein do I get in 30 grams? 27. So this is 90% pure. That's very, very high. Okay. High purity. So serving size, what's the serving size weight? What's the amount of protein I get per weight, right? That gives us a purity. How much protein are we getting uh, in terms of percentage of purity? Uh, let's just go back to part, uh, to number one of this that I mentioned, um, number of ingredients. So this one's got, okay. So medical ingredients, whey protein isolate, grass fed, uh, whey, of course, or grass fed cow, um, non, non medical ingredients, organic flavoring, organic stevia and xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is just a fiber essentially. Okay. It's just fiber. So, um, that's all that's in here Four ingredients. Okay. So. Um, by the way, I just ordered in a bunch of this. So if you want some, let me know. The vanilla, it, I find, is better than the chocolate. But if you don't like sweet, then maybe like you might like chocolate a little bit more. The vanilla's sweeter. All right, message of the day. And today's message, my computer's not responding, of course. What is my message here? Um, oh, let's see if I can remember it. I think I remember it. Don't challenge your, your, uh, excuse me, limit your challenges. Don't challenge your limitations. Excuse me. Let me say that again. Challenge your limitations. Don't limit your challenges. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you think that there's something that you're not capable of, and listen, I'm not asking to, for you to perform any physical feat that's like literally impossible for you. We're just asking about making choices here. All right. Try to challenge the limitations that you place on yourself. So if you say you can't do whatever, I just, you know, I can't, uh, whatever I need to, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think about a good example here. Um, I have to, you know, I can't weigh my food. I just can't do it. I'll eat clean, but I can't weigh my food. I, I really want to challenge you to at least start weighing some of your food. Okay, now I, there's nobody in this challenge that's doing that, but I'm just saying. All right, so at least that I know of. Um, try to look at the things that you can actually change, right? Like it's, again, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, these are things that are just choices you can choose to do or not do. So if you have a certain bar where you're like, no, I can't go beyond that bar. I want you to try to push that. And that may not happen today, but maybe it'll happen next week or the week after. I, I realize this is a process. I know we can't go from zero to hundred overnight. I don't expect you to. Um, I know a lot of you are already making massive changes. So, you know, I will, I will say right straight out to you, kudos to you. Okay. Cause I know this takes a lot of courage, but don't limit your challenges rather challenge your limitations. Okay. Positive energy, positive vibes, believe in yourself for love, God, give some gratitude and I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.